This is going to be the quick start guide on how to put two Apollos together in single phase mode. That means still outputting only 120 volts. The reason you would do this is to have a high output at 120 volts because this is technically 120 volts and 50 amps, which is 6,000 watts. Most of the time, if you have two units, you're going to be putting it in split phase, which is doing 240 volt power, and that will be in another video. I'm going to try to keep this as simple as possible, show you how all the cables and things are connected. Let's go ahead and jump right into it. I am on page 16 of the user manual, and here you can see single phase two units, still in 120 volts AC. The biggest thing to pay attention to are the communication cables right here. We have comms one and comms two of unit one and comms one and comms two of unit two. Notice how one from unit one is going to two of unit two and then opposite from unit one to unit two for these comms ports. So it's one to two and then two to one. Working from top to bottom, we have our AC input here. That's your wall charging. Then you have your DC input, which is your car charging. You have an inverter reset switch and an AC reset switch. And then as I said, most importantly are your communication cables. They are these red and black cables. They plug right into the back of the system here. So I've got comms one following all the way over to comms two of unit two. And then I have comm two going to comms one of unit two. This is for single phase 120 volt. For your parallel kit, you need to have this blue cable. It is longer and has a different tag than the battery cable. The blue is for parallel. So you can see I went into battery port one on Apollo one and went into battery port one of Apollo two. Then for the battery expansion, I'm using the red tagged battery cables from battery port two to battery port one. If I had another battery to add to this, I would go from battery port two on the battery to battery port one of the other battery. So I've done that on both units here. And then for my solar input, I have my DC switch here with solar already connected, but it's in the off position. The off position is green. You notice I have the long side of the cables going into the back of the system here, red going into the positive and black going into the negative. Then I have the short side of the DC switch going to my solar cables. And if you order or ordered from poweredportablesolar.com and you have any questions on this, you get lifetime support from me as well as my staff to help you figure out how to connect this together if this video doesn't make sense. But stick with me, we're almost through it, it's very simple. Now I'm gonna go ahead and power everything on. I'm gonna flip open these clear battery button covers. I'm just gonna, there's no particular order, just turn them all on at the same time, and this will start to boot up. The screens will flash, as well as these lights up here in the corner will flash until they have realized what's going on. You can push this flashing finger button to set the inverters properly. I'm gonna go into the settings of both of these units. I'm gonna make sure they're both in UPS mode. I personally keep energy saver mode off. For the unattended mode, I'm going to turn it on on this one. And I'm gonna set them both to 20%. Unattended mode simply means that the systems will turn back on and continue to run the AC outlets after draining and going to 0%. Most important thing here is the parallel mode. I'm gonna click here and make sure that I'm in multi because I have these two units together in single phase. I'm going to click multi and show that both of them are in multi. The reason we do this is this is going to make sure that the two units balance each other on their battery and solar input. So even if I only have solar input on here, it will charge both batteries simultaneously as well as drain simultaneously when I have any load. I've been doing this for over three months here at my house and there have been zero issues. This is the only system currently on the market that has load share and charge share. Any other system, if one unit has solar and the other one doesn't, that other unit will not get a charge as well as with the drain, if one unit is running a load, it will not take extra battery from the other to balance it out. The Apollo is the only one that does that. Now that being said, it is still recommended to have solar input on each unit. On this unit, I have 4,000 watts, and on this unit, I have 2,400 watts. It doesn't matter that one has more than the other. It is going to take the total collective and share it between the two units. 
to turn on the solar input, because I already have my solar panels connected to both, I'm gonna flip this up to the red mode. We will hear beeps as that turns on. And now both units have the capability to output as well as input at the same time from solar, self-balancing the whole time. For cable management, I will sometimes run the wires that are coming from the solar panels underneath this rear handle in through the DC switch and then here to the input. All I do is just bring it through the back, plug it in and turn it on. That helps keep things a little bit more tidy. Now this is close to 500 pounds of weight here and I'm moving it effortlessly because of these carts. I don't know if you can hear it or not, but the fans are running at full blast and they're very quiet. I can park these right here, engage the brakes. And now in this very compact setup, I have 6,000 watts of 120 volt output. I can have up to 8,800 watts of solar input and I have 21.5 kilowatt hours of battery capacity. This here is capable of running my entire house permanently. But because I'm a prepper and wanna to be totally prepared, I have doubled my system and I will be adding that to the side here and I'll do another video on how I do that as well as other videos on how to set these up in split phase. Get your equipment from poweredportablesolar.com. Be prepared and I'll see you guys in the next video.